Hi everybody, Mr. Farmer here, and today in AP Macroeconomics, we're talking about the loanable funds and the crowding out effect. Here we go. So, loanable funds graph, first off the axes, we have the real interest rate. That's going to be the interest rate paid by the borrower. So, when you borrow money, that's going to be the interest rate that we're referring to. In the x-axis, quantity loanable funds, that is the amount of funds available and desired to be borrowed. So there's a supply curve, and as you can guess, it's going to be upward sloping. So there it is, upward sloping. So the supply uh, of this is essentially the money available to be loaned out, and we're going to break that down quite a bit more throughout the rest of the semester when we start talking about the banking sector. We're going to revisit this supply curve, actually. And then the demand curve is based on the desire to borrow money. So it's downward sloping. We're going to kind of think the investment demand curve here as far as when it's a higher interest rate. Not as many people are going to be able to overcome that high interest rate with return on investment. At the lower interest rates, people are more likely to be able to, um, to pay off that interest rate with the whatever the return on investment are. So you can see supply equals demand. And so now we can get the real interest rates and the quantity or QLF or quantity of loanable funds right there. So these curves can shift. Um, the supply can shift mostly when there's a change in the money available to the bank. That's going to be more associated with a concept called limited reserves. Or when there's changes in the amount of money wanting to be lent out. And that's going to be kind of more based on the ample reserves. And we're going to talk more about that in the banking sector. There's already a lecture on that if you want to look at that. So if they say we want to supply a larger amount of money for whatever reason. Supply shifts to the right. What does that do? It's going to decrease the interest rates that they're going to loan uh, to the to the borrowers. And there's a larger amount of money available to be loaned out or borrowed in that case. In the demand curve, again, it's based on the desire to borrow money. So what can shift this? Again, we think the investment demand curve. Is there a change to return on investment? Uh, change to acquisitions, change to legislation for um, using green energy, therefore you get a tax break, whatever. That is the idea. So is there a change in potential return on investments? Um, or what we're going to come across more is if the government spends more money. More about that on the next slide. So if we have an increase in demands, what we notice is that that's going to increase the interest rates because increase in demand they want more money available and therefore they have to provide more the banks have to provide more money as well <clears throat> so what this is kind of referring to is the idea called the crowding out effect which college board loves to ask about so we have our loan to funds graph and we kind of have to make a little statement here if there's an increase in government spending that's going to cause an increase in demand for loanable funds Okay, we've seen that. Why? This goes back to the government, and I'm going to kind of broadly, it's not just the United States, the governments are in debt, which means when they go to spend money, they must borrow some of that money. Where do they borrow money from? From the Federal Reserve Bank, if you're in the United States, or a central bank, European Central Bank, if you're a different country. But they're going to borrow some amount of money. Okay, as we can see, based on our graph, that's again, them borrowing money is going to increase the real interest rates. So this is the crowding out effect. Due to the increased interest rates, there's going to be a decrease in borrowing by the private sector. It's a high, it's more expensive. Most likely in the investment sector, um, again, we think the investment demand curve, it could be personal consumption as well. So the loanable funds is going to impact the ASAD. After the government has spent their money, we'll assume the graph here has already shown that, because the higher interest rates, we're going to see a decrease in the demand curve. This concept is called the crowding out effect, and it is definitely something that is talked about. So in case we need a little definition, an increase in government spending makes it potentially more challenging, more expensive, to borrow money for the private sector. Thus, the private sector is crowded out from investing and spending. So the increase in demands for the loanable funds caused by the increase in current spending will thus cause a decrease in the aggregate demand curve. 
So now really quick, let's talk about loan wolf funds and the economic growth. So if you were asked a question about what would happen if real interest rates increase, because of increase in demand or a decrease in supply, so you have an increase in real interest rates. Well, consider if you were a business, are you more or less likely to borrow money now? You are less likely. Since interest rates are increased, they're less likely to borrow. It's more expensive. If businesses are less likely to borrow money, they're less likely to get the new equipment. If they don't have the new equipment, the economic growth is going to start to slow down. So typically, higher interest rates are used to try and cool down the economy. We'll talk about that when we start talking about the banking system in order to slow down inflation. Uh, and a decrease in interest rates are usually trying to stimulate the economy, and we can see that reflected in the loanable funds graph. All right, until next time.